Hey guys, and welcome to Petroped, and welcome to this week's Midweek 180. Now, I didn't do a Midweek 180 last week because I had a very special video from Alfa Romeo to share with you. So it's been a couple of weeks, but I am at home this week. I've actually got a few weeks at home just concentrating on the garage build, more on that later, and just general admin, basically. It's quite nice not to be away, although I am pretty much committed at the weekends for the next like four weeks or something, but it's nice to finally have some time at home. If you've not seen one of these before, this is my midweek update where I bring you my news views and information about upcoming reviews, all filmed in one take. Now then, let's get the housekeeping from the last midweek 180 out the way first. Leader of the pack was Stephen Spink. Well done, mate. Joined in the Magnificent Seven by Paul Mead, Malcolm Brew, Michael Kember, Stevie 007, Anthony Finch, and Owen McDonald. So whoever puts the first comment this week, you'll be my leader of the pack next week, and the first seven comments will be in my Magnificent Seven. So there's lots to cover this week. A few controversial things, maybe. I'm gonna start off with Formula One. Uh, from the weekend. Uh, as a McLaren fan, I am in a happy place because clearly McLaren are back. They have a car that seems to be right up there, the fastest, certainly one of the fastest cars. They had P1 and P2 in both qualifying and the race, and the race was fantastic. As a Lando fan, I'm still not quite sure how I feel about um, them swapping the cars so that Piastri got his first win. If I was Piastri, I'd really want to win a race on full merit. I appreciate that they kind of, the way they stopped Lando gave him an advantage. Lando really lost the race on the first corner. Uh, Piastri did really, really well. So I'm happy, but I would have rather them not swap over. But I guess the big talking point from the weekend is Max Verstappen and just, the way he's behaving at the moment, I don't think is showering him in glory, put it that way. He was very petulant on the radio. Clearly, he's not happy with the car at the moment. Red Bull brought big updates to the race that don't seem to have worked that well. Maybe it's a hungry specific issue. Um, but the way he was with uh, Lewis uh, throwing one down the inside, having a massive accident, blaming Lewis for turning in when he'd actually got to the corner and had to turn in to go around the corner. And then just the way he was to his engineers and the rest of the team, I'm just, that, that's the kind of thing that does not impress me. And I know there's a lot of Max Verstappen fans out there. One of the reasons I don't like him or dislike him as much as I do is I don't think he is a sportsman. I don't think he's got any class about him as well. He is undoubtedly fast in a Formula One car, but when it gets difficult, his true colours come to the fore and he's not a sportsman and I, I don't like that. Um, but we'll see. I think there's a big fight. I think McLaren have a very good chance of winning the Constructors' Champion this year. Uh, I think Lando's maybe a bit far back from Max, but who knows? All it needs is a DNF from Max and a couple of good, good positions from Lando. Uh, we shall see. Formula E at the weekend was in London and I was there. Now, I was invited the whole thing. Unfortunately, I could only go on the Saturday, but the last two rounds, rounds 15 and 16. So let's jump to London XL on Saturday and see what I got up to. Formula E time again, we're in London. I am in full Sakura mode. I've got my Japan shoes on. We're ready for a good race, hopefully. We're just watching qualifying at the moment. Ollie was in the top four of his half of qualifying. Sass is out at the moment. Let's see how they get on. So the cool thing about coming to the Formula E with Nissan is we get a garage tour and we come down into the pit lane which is always an interesting place to be. It's very, very busy. But here at XL, it's quite cool because it's indoors. It's actually in the exhibition space. It's quite a unique track, really, because the track is outside and inside. Luckily, it's dry today. But if it rains, that throws a real curveball into the mix because it's wet outside and dry inside. But let's head on over to the Nissan pits and take a look around. So here's the Nissan pit, Sasha's car in there being worked on, and then Ollie. Not the qualification that the guys would have wanted, but hey, they'll make it in the race. I'm sure they're going to really push hard in the race. Very, very cool though. This is Ollie's car. Already we're only 
about an hour away from the race. This is um, dry ice actually pumping cool air into the radiators to try and keep the radiators as cool as possible at the back you might be able to see and um, they're pumping cool air into the battery to make sure the battery is at its um, minimum temperature it's allowed but just so cool to actually see the garage space the team only has seven tons of freight for all of this all of the things that you can see in front of you the cars all of the pit equipment tools everything will be packed up and transported to the next race although this is actually the last race of the season but they start racing again in November other thing is this is a gen 3 car next year there's a gen 3.5 and the really big difference at the moment in the front here there's a motor which is only used as a generator or a, if you like a, a, an energy recuperator under braking it forces energy back into the battery but next year that will also be allowed to drive the car um, for qualifying uh, for the attack mode you're going to be getting four-wheel drive and then ultimately I think when it comes to a gen 4 car it will be a permanent four-wheel drive car but really really exciting but doesn't that car look cool with its Sakura livery so we've been kicked out of the pit lane because it's not that long until the race starts I'm just walking down the back of all the different garages saying hello to a few people bumping into people I haven't seen for a while which is always a good thing I'm gonna head back to the race suite now and we can watch the race and cheer on the boys hopefully Hopefully Ollie can improve on his start position. I think, I haven't checked this, I think he's in like seven, sixth or seventh place on the grid. It's very, very difficult to overtake here. So let's see how he gets on. But back to the race suite. So we are ready for the race. The cars have done their burnouts. That's what all the smoke in the air is for. As soon as they start, we're gonna head off outside and watch the cars come past. Here we go. So, so five lights, lights to come on when they go out. We'll um, away. So lights it up in London. At the oh, away we go. Lights are out and we're underway. Good start from Evans off the front row. Of the start Keep from the volume, the volume, I'd say. It's on the outside of Bowie as we head down towards the first corner. They're going to go left and then we're going to pick it right. Bowie starts up the second. It all comes right. to take us up with the first Let's wander corner. outside. Bits of plastic everywhere. That is not good at all. So, safety car's out. They've got to clear that car from down there. In fact, you've got the telehandler going down to sort it out right now. Look, hopefully that won't take too long to clear up. Wow, well, super slow, past double wave yellows. The McLaren that was caught up in that is now caught up the back, so he's at the back of the pack and hopefully they'll get that car out of the way pretty soon. So that's the end of the race. Victory for Pascal Verlein in the Porsche. Sadly, the Nissan boys didn't do great. 13th and 14th, I think. Sasha actually finished really well, but he had a five second penalty, which dropped him well down the field. And obviously Ollie was taken out early on by the other Porsche. So there you go. That's the end of the Saturday racing here at XL for the London E-Prix. Sadly, I'm not here tomorrow for the final race of the season. A massive thanks to Nissan for the invite. It's always great to catch up with my Formula E family, all the guys that were with me in Japan. Absolutely fantastic day. So yeah, well done, Pascal Verlein and Porsche. So yeah, it was a shame on Saturday. It wasn't Nissan's race at all. Unfortunately, Oliver Roland got um, involved in an incident with one of the Porsches early on and ended up at the back. Um, and Sasha just wasn't on the pace at all. But Pascal Verlein won the race, and that really set up the finale of the season on Sunday. Um, and it turned out to be a fantastic race for Nissan because Oliver Rowland got his first win this year. I was gutted not to be there. And Pascal Verlein ended up with sufficient points to win the World Championship this year for Porsche. So really, really good end to the season. Uh, the season starts again not next year actually, the back end of this year, I think it's December, I think the first race is. It's been fascinating being part of the Formula E journey this year with Nissan and I hope to continue that 
um, into the next season. Next season's really interesting because they've got the Gen 3.5 cars next year, so they start to bring that front motor into play, uh, and that should improve the performance at the starts and also um, on the boost mode because they'll have four-wheel drive and much more power, so that should be really cool next year. Now, I need to have a moan, and this car actually was released at, at Festival of Speed, so I am a little bit late to the party on this one. I want to talk about the Ford Capri. Now, for me, Ford, um, uh, I'm not quite sure who's pulling the strings at Ford, but I think they've made a couple of decisions that are questionable over recent times. The first one for me is, is getting rid of Fiesta as a car. It's a car that's been around a very long time. It's got a big fan base. I am an ex-Fiesta owner. And I, I think the challenge with it, I know it would have had to go on all electric platform, but you look at some of its competitors out there, the new Renault 5, the new Alpine A290, the Mini. You know, there's some really cool electric mini hatches and I think they could have done something really cool with an all-electric Fiesta and they didn't. Um, instead, um, one of the things they've done is bring back an iconic name in Capri. Now I am old enough to remember when Capris were really cool. They were a long, slopey-nosed, coupe format um, you know, th there was a range of different options in terms of drivetrain, but the big three-litre Capri rear-wheel drive, they were just cool cars. And when they announced they were bringing back Capri, I thought, that's going to be amazing. They're going to bring back this cool thing that nods back to the heritage of the name Capri. And they didn't. And I, I'm not, I, I, you know, I just don't get the new Capri design at all. It's more like a big SUV than a little sporty coupe. They're leveraging a name, but I don't think has any association with the car that they've launched. And I think it's really worrying for Ford because at the moment, in terms of all electric platform for Ford, all they've got is the Mackey, -E, the new Capri and the Explorer and the Lightning truck, if you count that as well. But I don't think that's a strong enough platform. And, and, and there are rumors that they are scaling back production of their internal combustion and hybrid cars. So that's things like Puma and Focus and Cougar to change that proportion of cars that have to be sold that are all electric, which this year is 22%. I'm going to be doing a video on this, by the way, very, very soon, because I think it's a subject that needs to be talked about. And, and I do worry about uh, Capri because I've, I've not met many people that have gone, Ford, the new Ford Capri, that's a car I'd buy. Certainly not one I would anyway. Um, uh, moving on very quickly, uh, Garage is going very, very well. There will be an update coming soon. I've got lots of trades on site at the moment, lots of decisions happening. Um, we are in week eight, and I think, talking to the builders, we've only got about three weeks left, and it will be finished. They've worked remarkably quickly, and it's taking shape and looking really, really cool. So I'm hoping the next update will probably go live next Monday, so make sure you tune in for that. This Friday, um, is one of the videos I made at Goodwood. Um, and I often get asked what it's like to drive a car up the hill at the Goodwood Festival of Speed. So I've done a video on it. Um, I was invited by Maserati to drive an MC20 cello up the hill at the Festival of Speed. And Friday's video is really looking at what it's like to do that. And I have to say it was quite nerve wracking <laughs> because you know, you're driving a quarter of a million pound car up the hill in front of 60,000 people. And just before I was due to go up, the rain came down and it started to get a bit wet and a bit damp and a bit sketchy. Um, so yeah, all in all, it was, uh, it was fun, but a little bit emotional. But anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Um, put in your comments about what do you think about the new Ford Capri? What do you think about Mr. Verstappen and his behavior? Um, and I shall see you on the next video. But if you enjoyed that, give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. And I'll see you on the next film, which is this Friday at 6 for what it's like to drive a supercar up the hill at festival speed. You take care, guys. Drive safe.